Jesus, author and creator of everything, knew and foresaw what would happen from his birth, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Because of his foreknowledge, he was aware of the circumstances of his birth, the worship that would be given by the Magi, the pain and agony leading up to the crucifixion, and the knowledge that he would be going back to sit at the right hand of God the Father. He saw it all, but still chose to walk through it in order to save us from our sins. Mary is to be married to Joseph, who was a righteous man. When he heard she would bear a child, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, so he considered divorcing her quietly. While he was considering this, an angel appeared to Joseph and told him to take Mary as his wife. She would give birth to a son, and they should call him Jesus. Joseph did as he was told. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Despite these lowly beginnings, news of Jesus' birth spread quickly throughout Judea and even beyond its borders. A group of astronomer priests called wise men by some journeyed to Jerusalem. They were asking for the newborn king of the Jews. They had seen his star in the far off eastern lands and had come to worship him. They searched for a long while and finally arrived at his home in Nazareth almost two years later. When they found him, they fell down on their knees and worshipped him and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. was born in an obscure village 
the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30, and then for three years he was an itinerant preacher. He never had a family or owned a home. He never set foot inside a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He never wrote a book or held an office. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. While he was still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends deserted him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves, and while he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had, his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure for much of the human race. All the armies that ever marched, and all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as this one solitary 